Hello, my soccer universe. Super Bowl starts soon, but I'm gonna sleep because I'm gonna watch it tomorrow. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed my American football jersey collection. But we're gonna hear talking about soccer. Uh, sorry, I'm not wearing a soccer jersey. I was about to pull down the Madrid jersey from back there, but um, frankly, I didn't see anything of the game, and that it so it didn't feel right. I'm not gonna spend much time on. Uh, Real Madrid in this video. They won 3-0 against Alaves, which yeah is a big result for them. They are, in a way, the winner of this La Liga match day. Uh, the other game uh, that was really big was Betis against uh, Atletico Madrid, where yeah, uh, Betis had a huge chance that was wonderfully saved by uh, Oblak in goal. Um, they got a penalty. Um, pretty deserved so handling of the ball in the box and make it 1-0 uh, early in the second half. I'm just looking it up. It is 65th minute, uh, 65th minute Canales. Uh, Griezmann hits the post, but Atleti cannot get it done. And so with Barcelona not winning, they even managed to increase the lead of Atletico Madrid. Um, Barcelona 50, Atletico Madrid 44, so it's 6 instead of 5 uh, points. Real Madrid, however, now 42 points, 2 points behind Atletico, and we have the Derby Madrileño coming up next week. I think it is um, at the uh, Wanda Metropolitano, but remains to be seen. Uh, Sevilla is now on 36 points in 4th place. Uh, Alaves is dropping out. Getafe 32. Betis goes now in 6th place ahead of Alaves. They all with 32 points. Uh, Getafe, Betis, Alaves and Valencia th with and Real Sociedad 30 points each. That I think should be the teams that are fighting for Europe. Mm, let's see the other games. Uh, Celta beat Sevilla yesterday. I mean Sevilla. I don't get Sevilla sometimes, but you know, they got a big beating. Uh, Via Real Espanol ended 2 2. Uh, probably doesn't help either one of these teams e uh, as well. Uh, Eibar, Girona uh, 3 0. And yeah, tomorrow we have Rayo against uh, Le Leganes. I just want to see Espanol actually with the point moves up because Girona is losing. Uh, Via Real is still uh, second to last with 19. So at the end, um, well. <laughs> It is interesting because Leganes 23, Rayo 23, they're, pl uh, they're playing tomorrow. That's actually, <laughs> let me see here, that's a pretty big matchup. Uh, Girona 20-24 and Celta with 24, they don't seem, and Espanyol keeps dropping. I mean, they now got a point and moving a little bit up, but Espanyol just two or three months ago were right on top of the table. And now they're not safe. They might even get relegated uh, if they continue this horrible streak. I, I, I would say it's very difficult to say in Spain. It's really a uh, very smooth transitions. But Athletic Bilbao looks kind of uh, better now, although they lost not the Sociedad. But um, that's roughly where the relegation zone, zone starts for me. Athletic Bilbao 26, Raiva. Valladolid 25, Espanyol 25, Celta 24, Girona 24, Leganes 23, those are the ones above the drop, and then Rayo 23, Villarreal 19, Uesca 15, Villarreal and Uesca doesn't look good for them. That's all for La Liga for today. I actually didn't watch much. I saw maybe a minute or two of the Atleti game because uh, we had quite some to do today and I actually wanted to watch. If I would have watched, I had it on, but I uh, didn't see too much. I had Udine against Fiorentina, um, mainly because I like both teams. Uh, second, Fiorentina is fun to watch. Third, this is the, those are two cities that were in my 2017 uh tour through Italy with my wife and we liked both cities a lot with fond memories. Udine is actually, I mean, it cannot compare to Florence, but uh, Udine is actually quite nice, quite nice city if you get the chance uh, and you're in the area, watch, uh, stop by U Udine. It's, I think, worth a visit. I mean, it doesn't hold, do not compare it to Florence or any of the other big name cities, but it's a nice town. Uh, we really like the vibe in that town. But yeah, uh, the game ended, uh, actually, Udin, it was also the Astori game. I said it yesterday, uh, last time that also played, um, Astori died in Udine and the game had to be postponed. 
Um, the other thing that I liked about this game before I go to, to the result finally, um, when I looked at it, it reminded me so much of my youth going to the stadium. It looked like a classic Lask against Austria Wien matchup with uh, black and white stripes and black uh, pants for Udine and Fiorentina actually in purple and white. And this is actually a much better look than purple and black uh, for them. Uh, game, it was kind of a timid game. Um, Udine took the lead through Striga Larsen from a counter attack uh, in the 56th minute, I think. Let's check that, 56th. And then uh, nine minutes later, uh, Fernandez, a Swiss national player with a, a quite a big shot from outside of the box made it 1-1 Fiorentina had some more chances but couldn't get it done and they just put seven past Roma and now um, they cannot beat Udine it's a little bit of a puzzle Spal earlier only played a goalless draw against Torino and Genoa at the same time played a 1-1 against Sassuolo um, then I watched Premier League. Uh, maybe let's go to that before we go back to Serie A. Uh, those other ones. Um, Premier League. We had um, Leicester losing at home to Manchester United. I didn't see any highlights, but from what I heard, is it was just uh, typically um, win that with uh, nothing special, but you get the win. And then Manchester City against Arsenal. That, that was one of the two matches that I really wanted to watch today. And yeah, Manchester City within the first minute again, uh, Aguero makes the goal. Um, a few minutes later, Aguero seemingly got the second, but it was ruled correctly. So offside, 2 0. And I thought, oh yeah, they're going to eat, eat uh, Arsenal alive. But somehow Arsenal found their footing and got a very early equalizer through Koscielny after a counter. -trick. This was basically the first foray in the opposing half. And then Arsenal managed to kind of hold the game even, not having big chances. And also City kind of held back, but the game was kind of, kind of a balance. I mean, they were defending deep. They um, thought they had actually some control over it. And it was a little bit out of nowhere that suddenly City gets the 2-1 lead. Um, towards the end of the first half again through Aguero. Um, Badly defended, absolutely badly defended by our Arsenal. And then the second half starts, and I gotta say, I didn't see anything of Arsenal anymore. They seemingly tried to uh, make the game a little bit more open and uh, take part in the game, uh, and that didn't work well. There was nothing from Arsenal anymore, and Aguero in the 61st made it 3-1. I think with VAR this would have been rule ruled out because uh, it came off his arm. Uh, to hit the net. I mean, he he was he was sliding in there and then with the net three one. Yes, I was not happy about, about it, but honestly, I think City deserved to win. They could have uh, scored four or five. This was a well deserved win by City, and now they put the pressure on Liverpool, who have to play uh, play West Ham uh, tomorrow. If I look now at the uh, standings. In the Premier League, if Liverpool sixty one, City fifty nine. I mean, this is all. It's, Seems almost like a must win for Liverpool. Uh, if they get a point, yeah, it's down to, uh, it's not two, it's three points, which is still comfy, but you know, nerves will fly high. Um, through the Arsenal lost Chelsea, moves up in fourth, United wins, also put more, more moves up in fifth. So we have Liverpool 61, uh, City 59 at the moment, uh, Tottenham 57, uh, Chelsea 50. Uh, United 48 and Arsenal 47. Uh, it's still, I think, between those three. Tottenham looks like a solid third place team at the moment, and uh, the title is between Liverpool and City. And I really hope that Liverpool will get this one done. Um, that's an important win for them. Uh, other than that, I think we talked about the Premier League uh, extensively yesterday, so we can go back to Serie A. I had to pause that game because we wanted to have lunch, and that were I don't want to say robbed me, but I probably would have watched a little bit uh, more of um, Inter against Bologna. Although I thought, yeah, Inter, you saw my UD, so I, I thought uh, that's Inter, despite their bad form of late, will probably win that one. <laughs> I'm not happy that Inzaghi got fired, but, you know, Bologna was in dire straits and they got Mihailovic, uh, who not too long ago was Milan coach. Mihailovic should coach Lazio. I'm gonna just put, put, put it out there. He, for, for me, Mihailovic is a Lazio player. 
Um, I watched the I just watched the highlights, and Icardi should have made it one 0 in the first minute. I mean, a horrible defending by Bologna all the way through. But then Bologna actually took control of the game, uh, had chances, and got a deserved lead after a corner. And what a weird corner it was! Um, it was a short corner and on the near post, something there between two inter defenders, just uh, connects with the head, and it goes into the near corner. Amdanovic is staying in the middle of the goal and cannot do anything about it. A really, really weird goal. Um, 1-0 for Bologna. And they hold on to halftime and they hold on for the entire game because Inter just cannot get the ball into the net. Inter, I think at this moment you can really say Inter is in crisis. I think this, um, whatever happened between Inter and Napoli, completely derailed Inter. This whole uh, business. Since then, Inter is a shadow of itself. Inter looked actually quite, quite, quite good. I was actually more, more worried about Milan, and it kind of flipped a little bit. On all, on a little bit. But to me, Inter is in crisis. Bologna, upset of the of the day, to be honest. And you know, we get more upsets uh, these days. Um, at the, roughly the same time, there was also a big game in Greece between Ike and Pauk. I just followed the uh, results. Pauk got uh, in the 30th uh, man's hands and off still managed to take the lead. Defended it well, but they uh, gave up a goal 50 minutes uh, before the end of the game. And so Pauk still has a good lead in the Greek league. Let, 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 let me just uh, check the standings in Greece, if I can get them easily. Greece. Here, table. Yeah, Spark 51, Olympiakos 45, uh, and they play next week. So that seems to be almost the title decider in February. So, yeah, uh, Ike 37 is in third place. This is Parks to lose. I have to say it in that way. And then the big game for me, you know. I was a little bit down after the City game, but it was a very deserved win. Um, the Inter game, that put me right on cloud seven again. Uh, and then uh, Milan-Roma. Roma-Milan, I should say. And I was hoping that Milan, with um, having the good experiences now against Napoli, and also yeah, twice Napoli in Coppa Italia, and Roma losing 7-1 to Fiorentina, will have an impact that Milan actually can make a statement and pull very, very, very close to Inter, uh, meaning within two points. Um, which would mean that, um, you know, Milan doesn't need to necessarily become fourth. Maybe there's a third place finish in there. I really like the signings. I mean, they were the top spenders. I don't know. How, uh, this will probably not bode well for financial fair play, to be fair, but... Um, the two signings so far, Paqueta and Piontek, well, whenever they play, they are real improvements on the, on, on, on the squad. Well, the game, first of all, Jeko is playing and this, his suspension is only for next year in the Cup Com competition. I didn't know that. It doesn't make any sense to me, to be honest. To uh, Yeah, but maybe they keep it all separate. But it uh, didn't make too much sense to me. I, I, I really don't like that. Roma came out storming, honestly, and um, the whole game was kind of this two-sided sort. Um, Milan uh, finally got the defensive woes together. I mean, at the beginning of the season, they were leaking goals left and right. Then they had the, the, the time when they're not giving up goals, but they get their not no, no scoring in it. That's why we have Piantec and Iguain is out. Um, but yeah. Roma at the beginning had a few chances and Donnarumma had had his hands full. Uh, but then Milan got control of the game and a wonderful deep pass uh, hits Paqueta. No, it was not a deep pass on Paqueta. I, I, uh, Paqueta uh, got the ball off. Roma defender goes a little bit in the box, uh, uh, out, out, outside of the box, and you can see Piontek when you see the re replay. Watch his movement. First, he's completely detached from any, any defender, and just when you see the Paqueta comes in, he makes uh, a beeline towards the goal, connects, and it's 1-0. Piontek 
third game for Milan, three goals. Uh, absolutely amazing. And um, he is not necessarily a big part of their game, but he is uh, absolutely deadly in the box. Uh, I gotta say, it was a little bit of a luck, lucky leader for Milan, although they seemingly got... I always had, had the feeling that Milan has the control of the game, and this was for most of the time. Milan has control of the game, and Roma is way more dangerous uh, on the counter attack. And I think the, uh, having the Rossi back helped for Roma. And yes, uh, they are my two favorite favorite teams. Milan is still uh, the team that I'm supporting uh, most. Any other game, I would be for Roma. Uh, I'm gonna be absolutely honest, but uh, Milan supersedes everything. And yeah, I think it was a little bit lucky that Milan were leading at halftime 1-0. Um, but yeah, I was in good spirits. I thought they over overplayed Paqueta really is uh, convincing me more, more and more. He has his defensive um, uh, woes, but not too bad also. I'm so happy that Paqueta is finally uh, playing and playing well. Second half starts and immediately Roma equalizes. Uh, 46th minute, Saniolo uh, puts in the rebound and I thought, oh no, now Roma is coming uh, all out. No, it was Milan who, who was coming uh, then back. And actually really, for and up until the 60s, it was Milan controlling game, have, having chances and honestly being robbed of a penalty. Uh, Kolarov wrestling down Suso and they're not even looking at it and then uh, Paqueta is getting a yellow card because he's protesting. This was an absolute shambles that call. Uh, to me, yes, I have the Rossonero glasses um, for that reason maybe I'm a little bit biased but to me this was a clear penalty. And I also got, 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 got to say I'm usually not at the referees. I think it's a weak in many regards. Tonight I had the feeling that this referee was not in favor of Milan, let's put it that way. I'm not saying he helped Roma, but he was not in favor of Milan. There were other decisions. But Roma clawed itself back into the game and between the 60 and 75, I mean it was gradually, gradually, gradually Roma getting back and Roma uh, actually dominating, having huge chances. Um, Donnarumma had his work cut out for him. And I have to say, it, uh, he was lucky when Pellegrini hit the post. A minute later, two minutes later, Pellegrini should have been set off. <coughs> uh, he held back Suso. And again, uh, on Suso, it would have been a second yellow, he should have been sent off. And right off that, Suso makes a horrible free kick and Roma gets a huge chance again to score. I mean, uh, at that moment, Suso... He, I think he played well in the first half, but he was declining from then on. And yeah, uh, Suso was taken off of Piontek. Yeah, they had a counter chance between Paqueta and, and Piontek, where I really thought they could have made more out of it. Uh, so yeah, it was a little bit, the last punch was missing, but they got it because Laxalt came on and had a huge chance that... Um, How, how to say, a more offensive than money player would, would, would have probably made that one. And it would have made a, made a, uh, meant a win for Milan, which would have been a real statement win on the other side. It was not deserved. Uh, it ended 1-1. I think the result overall was just Roma had more chances, Milan had more of the game. And I think with... Uh, I really don't want to say it, but I have to say it. Uh, with a proper re re referee, they would have gotten a penalty and maybe more. So uh, with, with this result, Milan now remains in fourth place. But, you know, with this draw, tomorrow Atalanta and Lazio are playing. And they are 32 points each, and they are both favored. I mean, Lazio plays at Frosinone, Atalanta at Cagliari. I can see both of them winning. They are both 32 points. They can go draw level with Roma. That's going to be interesting. Uh, Inter is now 40 points, so only 4 points between Milan and Inter. And if Milan would have won today, it would have been only 2 points. I would feel a lot more comfortable. Uh, Milan actually pulling Inter back into clawing onto the Champions League policy. Inter seemed safe, but now they have 2 losses in a row. That makes me a little bit optimistic. So you were 60, Napoli 51. Uh, those 2 in the Champions League. Uh, so... 
Roma 35, Sampdoria 30, 33, they lost. And then we have Atalanta, Roma, Fiorentina only 31, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Torino only 31. And then, yeah, uh, towards the bottom, we have um, Frosinone will play tomorrow. Bologna now 17, Empoli 18. So there's something happening. Udine looks dangerous, in uh, severely in danger at 19. And we have to see what Cagliari will do. Cagliari will do uh, 21 points. Spal uh, taking the point is now a little bit ahead of Cagliari, one point. I think uh, Genoa, Parma, Sassuolo, Sass, Sassuolo, Torino in the midfield are safe. So yeah, and then there was one more uh, notable result. We just saw the end uh, of it, like uh, last five minutes. Lyon beat PSG. PSG is in trouble. And I should do uh, more France-centric video. I know I've been saying that a lot. Uh, I will probably try to do this during the, during the week. Um, Di Maria got PSG the lead in seventh. Dembele equalizes and Fekir with a penalty in the 49th. Uh, from what I heard, this game could have ended 5-4 or some, something like that. It seemed to be a great game. Um, I watched a not so great game, although you know I always will watch Milan. So what can I do? Unless it's really a foreign conclusion, or I'm not into it. But I am into it uh, at the moment. I think I'm getting excited about Milan. I just want them to. I mean, yes, the three games uh, Genoa they won. Uh, they did not lose to Napoli, they did not lose away to Roma. So, I mean, I'm quite happy with those five points that Pick kicked up. Now, now they have Cagliari and so on come, uh, come, coming up. Um, maybe they can get something going. Maybe. Just maybe. I'm still hopeful that they will get in the Champions League. Well, that's that. <laughs> it's very late. I gotta sleep. Gotta get up in seven hours. Uh, let me know what you thought about the games today, whether you agree with my assessments of all the games I talked about. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.